Welcome back. Looms for hand weaving cloth have become increasingly sophisticated over time. But the basic concept still remains the same. Weaving horizontal threads, called weft threads, through vertical threads, called warp threads. This creates the cloth's patterns and structure. The loom lifts selected warp threads. The weaver passes the weft thread between them and uses a beater to pack the weft tightly. They construct the loom's frame out of ash, which is strong enough to withstand the tension of thousands of threads. Workers submerge the frame pieces in mineral oil to prevent the wood from drying out. They assemble the frame pieces with heavy duty nuts and bolts, then mount high strength plastic brackets for attaching the various components, such as the cloth beam that grabs and moves the finished cloth. They wrap sandpaper around the beam's adhesive surface to grab the cloth without damaging it. Elsewhere, workers make the loom's cables out of high-strength stainless steel. These cables maneuver harnesses that lift and lower the warp threads. After cutting each cable to length, she forms a loop through a cable crimp. Then she locks the loop with this heavy-duty crimping tool. On one of the frame pieces, they mount a metal plate bearing the loom's model and serial numbers. They assemble the pulley system on which the harness cables run. They thread the plastic pulleys on a steel axle and position the axle with steel discs called stop collars. A spring lever helps each harness lift its respective warp thread. After hammering a pin into each lever, they hook a wire to the pin. Then squeeze the wire closed so that it can't unhook. They attach a chain to an eyelet on one side of the spring lever. Shortening or lengthening this chain adjusts the tension of the harness. Like the pulleys, the spring levers go onto an axle across the loom's frame. Another loom component, called the warp beam, has holes which hold metal hoops that guide the warp threads. A brake drum on this side provides counterforce to keep the threads taut. At the front of the loom, they install foot pedals, called treadles. The weaver uses them to lift and lower the warp threads. Next comes the beater, which the weaver uses to pack the weft thread into the fabric. The pulley system for the harness cables goes on top. This computer control device, called a dobby head, lifts and lowers the warp threads according to the programmed weaving pattern. Each harness cable hooks onto the dobby head, goes around one of the pulleys, and attaches to a hook on the harness. The factory checks every dobby head on a test loom to ensure the device outputs the programmed patterns correctly. Next, workers install the spring levers that help the harness lift the warp threads. Each lever hooks onto a spring, which attaches to a chain, which connects to a harness. They install the warp beam at the back of the loom. The weaver installs the hoops and warp threads on the warp beam. As the loom weaves, the cloth beam gently moves the emerging fabric forward. The weft thread is wrapped around a bobbin, called a shuttle. This pattern requires a two-weft thread technique that uses a second shuttle suspended in front of the weaver. The loom keeps the threads evenly taut, producing a consistent and uniform weave, the hallmarks of a beautiful quality cloth.
Until the mid-19th century, Mother Nature was the only producer of ice, and the idea of man-made ice seemed preposterous. It was a doctor in Florida who, in need of ice to cool feverish patients, invented the ice machine. The technology took a few years to refine, but then they were ready to chill. Today's commercial ice makers churn out ice on demand, allowing restaurants and other businesses to keep things cool at all times. To make one, machinery folds the edges of stainless steel sheets so they can be assembled into the ice maker frame and exterior panels. Meanwhile, copper uncoils over a roller, which removes the curl from the metal. A machine spiked with blades then punches the copper. In one action, it cuts numerous slits in the strip and slices it to the correct length. The notch strips are now ready to be assembled into a grid. This grid is part of the evaporator. It's here that liquid refrigerant will evaporate as it pulls heat from the water to freeze it into ice cubes. This copper tubing is central to that process. An automated arm bends it into a configuration called the serpentine, producing a coil that will fit on the back of the evaporator. As liquid refrigerant moves through it, it will draw heat out of the water. This machine flattens the tubing, giving it greater surface contact with the evaporator to facilitate heat transfer. Then it's into a washing machine to remove any oils or oxides on the parts. A worker now applies strips of solder to the evaporator's backplate. This acid solution will act as a bonding agent. He then places the evaporator, solder side down, on the serpentine tubing and locks the assembled parts in an iron rig. He hoists the rig into an oven to melt the solder strips between the back plate and tubing, fusing the parts together. Then it's into an ultrasonic bath, where high frequency sound waves clean off lingering contaminants. An inspector now examines the evaporator to confirm that the parts have been solidly fused. Next, he installs pipes on an ice maker side panel. These are the lines that supply refrigerant to the machine. He turns the assembly around and removes the caps on the compressor to connect it to a network of pipes. The compressor will force refrigerant through these pipes in a continuous cycle of heating and cooling to eventually produce ice. He brazes the joints to seal the connections. He attaches a fan to another side panel. It will blow cool air onto the radiator to cool the refrigerant and help convert it back into a liquid. Now he pumps the refrigerant into the system and measures the flow to ensure it receives a precise amount. Meanwhile, at another station, they assemble the ice bin. It's time to test this ice maker. Water flows continuously over the surface of the evaporator grid as the temperature inside the cells drops below freezing. Impurities like minerals are washed away as the water turns to ice and the result is crystal clear cubes, almost three kilograms in just 15 minutes. Finally, they install the front panel on the unit. This job is done and it's time for a little liquid refreshment on the rocks, of course.
So, if you're fishing for compliments, I am not taking the bait. For real. Honestly, I second that emulsion. Just brush up on your knowledge and remember that the facts loom large. Because now you know how it's made. Urmează un bărbat și o femeie în sălbăticie.